Digital twin technology is changing the way we build in tomorrow's world. I'm at TK Elevator, exploring how this technology is helping to create Multi, a ropeless elevator designed to make megatall buildings more efficient. Let's take a deeper dive into how digital twin technology is making this a more sustainable building choice and a safer one. So this is Multi. Tell me about this innovative technology. Yes, it is. It's actually the world's first ropeless elevator for high-rise. Um, instead of conventional ropes, uh, we took away the ropes and replaced them with linear drive technology. So we placed electromagnets along the guide rails and have permanent magnets behind the cabin on the sledge. So we use electromagnetic forces to either pull up the cabin or control the downwards movement of the elevator. So what were the advantages of getting rid of the, of the traditional shafts and ropes? So when you have super tall buildings, you actually need to travel in segments. So you would go from a ground floor to something called a sky lobby, where you have a second bank of elevators that will take you to the destination floor. So you need to change elevators. With multi, the need to switch elevators is gone. So you can essentially get into the elevator cabin in the lobby and go all the way up to your destination floor. So you end up with just one smaller shaft and you reclaim all of that space. Exactly. Now, as we mentioned, traditional elevator technology has been around for a long time, over 160 years. People consider it to be very safe and reliable. This is really innovative technology. What makes it safe and reliable? So we have over 100 sensors per meter continuously collecting data and we can use this data to feed digital twins. So on top of this conventional means of safety, we are deploying digital twin technology to evaluate the safety of the system. Totally. So as we know already, a digital twin is the digital replica of the physical world. A digital twin can facilitate evaluating the safety aspects of uh, a machine while it's being designed and developed, when it's deployed in the field and uh, in operations, and even for maintenance purposes. Why don't we go upstairs and dive deeper into digital twins. Let's go. All right, let's do it. So the digital twin gets updated in real time, but the data that is flowing from sensors. First, you can look in the past through historical data. It's like traveling through time to the past. See what happens. Second, you can use AI to look into future scenarios that can potentially happen and predict. And third, you can simulate various situations, like the machine operates in extreme heat or low humidity, and see how the machine sustains itself and operates itself. Now, let's go take a look at the observation deck. Okay. Wow, gentlemen. The observation deck is amazing, and this, this view is out of this world, and I certainly want to get out there and take a look at this, but I still have a couple of questions. So tell me a little bit more about how digital twin technology is used both in the development phase and then moves into operations. So as Mo mentioned before, in the development process, we can use the digital twin to simulate situations such as emergency break situations uh, that would be costly and cumbersome to do in the physical world. In operations, um, the elevator that we just rode actually has a real-time digital twin where it's sending telemetry data to the Microsoft Azure Cloud. Out of this data, we are generating actionable insights for our service technicians. So for example, helping them troubleshoot an elevator more eff efficiently or giving them actionable insights about what they need to do on a, a maintenance visit to prevent future failures. So let's remember, Digital Twin is about fusing physical and digital worlds. Let me give you an example. Imagine a, a factory floor. Technician trying to uh, interact with a machine on the factory floor. We have the digital twin of the machine. We have the digital twin of the factory floor. Uh, the technician is wearing a HoloLens. He or she can literally inspect and evaluate the machine and make a decision to what the next step is for that particular situation. Without digital twins, we cannot have these models of interactions. That is really just amazing. This has been great, gentlemen. I want to thank you both very much for your time. And I want to get out there now, take a look at this view. Come on. Let's do that.
So Kathleen is going to be heading back to Invention Land. She's going to talk to George about digital twin technology, uh, Microsoft and Azure, and of course, Multi as well. But oh my goodness, gentlemen, look at this. This view is incredible. I can't believe that you guys get to come up here and look at this all the time. Yeah, it certainly is beautiful. Hey, Arm, is this real or is it a digital twin? <laughs> I don't think we're quite there yet, Mo. I'm sure it's coming really soon, but that's the real thing, I can tell you that. Well, gentlemen, thank you again. Hope to see you both real soon. All right, see you later, Greg.